Welcome to the OT tip of the month. This month, I wanted to share with you some information about one of our hidden senses, our interoceptive sense or interoception. And our interoceptors are all throughout our body. They're in our gut, in our head, in our heart, in our skin, in our muscles. You get the idea. Um, and the reason for that is it really helps us to know what we're feeling on the inside and has two main functions. One is to help our body stay in balance or stay in homeostasis. So it regulates things like our respiratory rate, our heart rate, our immune responses, um, perspiration, um, also, you know, helping us to know when we're hungry or thirsty or need to use the bathroom. And the reason that we're sharing it with you today is because of the second function, its connection to emotions and helping us inform how we're feeling and more importantly, how to help ourselves. So basically, self-regulation. It's the foundation. It's the first step of self-regulation is understanding what we're feeling inside and connecting it to our emotions. So our ability to do that is our inner is interoceptive awareness. It's that ability to notice those sensations and then to make that connection to emotions. So for example, um, one person might have loose muscles, a slow heart rate, a quieter voice, and for them, that might cue that they're tired. Those same sensations in someone else might cue that they're actually feeling really calm and regulated and ready to learn. So interoceptive experiences are very unique to individuals. Emotions are very unique to individuals. There isn't a set you know, if you're mad, you feel X. If you're annoyed, you feel X. No, everybody is different. Um, and so we need to be really careful about pointing out different emotions or different things that we're noticing in people because that might actually not match what they're feeling on the inside of their body. And again, the reason that we're talking about interoception is because it's really that first step to self-regulation, um, asking ourselves and having that awareness of what those sensations are, connecting them to emotions allows us to then do something about it and act or take an action like you know, helping ourselves when we're mad or frustrated. Um, what's really interesting is the research that's coming out about interoception. There is a connection with different mental health conditions. Um, it's just emerging. Um, but what they're seeing is that with different mental health conditions, some um, have interoceptive awareness that's like too big and some are too small. And so it really can affect that very first step of self-regulation and being able to notice those sensations. Um, so what we want to help our students is to start tuning in and have that awareness and make that connection. So for example, when I watch my son play basketball, I get really nervous and excited, especially if it's like a really close game. And the very first thing that I notice is my heart starts racing. It starts like beating out of my chest. So I notice that I ask myself, oh my gosh, what's going on? My heart is racing. Uh, I name that kind of, you know, in my head, I don't necessarily name it out loud. And then I make that connection like, oh, okay, you're getting a little too nervous and excited. And then what I do for that act piece is I take some deep breaths in the, in the stands and help get myself calm so that, um, you know, I, I don't get overly excited or start yelling at the refs or something. Um, and so what you can do to help your students is to help to start build that interoceptive awareness um, by first, you know, modeling that for students. So in the example of the heart rate, so if you're doing a movement break or something or doing a movement break, you can say, oh my gosh, I really noticed my heartbeat is beating so fast or you know, my muscles got really tired. They feel really heavy now after we did all of those squats. So you can start to point out those things that you're noticing in your body and start to model for your students. You can also during natural activities like a movement break um, or mindfulness or breathing or a science project, like anything that you're doing that's active or an art project, you can uh, ask the students, like, what are you noticing? If you're doing something you know, manipulative with their hands. What are you noticing with your hands? Are they wet? Are they dry? Are they sticky? Are they um, sweaty? You know, you can help give some of those different descriptor words, especially for younger students, because they might not have that vocabulary like older middle school or high school students will have. But depending on the activity, you can just start to bring that awareness, whether it's to their hands or their feet or their muscles. You know, again, it depends on the activity that you're doing, but you can start to build that awareness by just 
asking some of those questions. And then this last bullet point is um, in regards to a student that, that experiences some uh, challenges or some big emotions, later on, if you're having a reflective conversation with them and talking about what happened, when they're calm and when they're regulated and having this discussion, you can you can point out some of those things that you noticed with them and be curious and ask questions like, gosh, you know, before you got really mad and stormed out of the room, I noticed that your eyebrows looked like they were really tight. Your jaw looked really tight. You know, I noticed your arms were, um, your muscles looked really tight and tense. You know, what was going on? Did you notice that in your body? Um, you know, what, what did you notice? How are you feeling when that happened? And depending on the age and the awareness of the, of the student, they may or may not be able to reflect with you. Um, but be sure to be curious and ask questions as opposed to like, oh, I noticed, you know, your eyes were furrowed, um, your jaw was tight and your hands were, your arms were clenched. You know, you looked really mad instead of saying that because they might not have felt mad. They might have just been annoyed or they might have felt something totally different. Again, everybody's experience is, is unique and we want to honor that and be curious about what's going on so that we can help them next time. So you know, next time you feel that, you could do this and give some appropriate options and choices. So I hope this was helpful to understand a little bit more about interoception and the role that it plays in self-regulation and try some of these things with your students to build that interoceptive awareness.